homeless liaison officer. Liaison, exactly. Just at least just be able to characterize who that person is and I, what is it that we don't know and should know. I think I can imagine that being part of the report that leads into then the alternative um, suggestions. I will, I will follow that up and uh, look for an opportunity to get back to the committee on this. Um, but I, 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 that makes complete sense to me. And I, there's a number of ways I can do that. I can, um, I, uh, I can ask uh, people in the home who are working uh, uh, with uh, homeless uh, individuals. I uh, also, um, uh, uh, I can uh, ask uh, uh, other people who are connected with uh, that population and uh, see what, what people know about the position. And uh, I, I, I can get back to the committee. Thank you. Sounds good. Cynthia, would you like to proceed? Uh, um, I was just trying to see if Elizabeth was with us yet, not quite. Sure, and just really quickly. Um, so I volunteered the last time to kind of pursue domestic violence a little bit more in terms of what the police department is doing. And I want to take into consideration the conversation that we had in the full commission about alternatives doing domestic violence and a little bit of tension about, you know, doubling up on the same topic. I think Booker and I agreed we were approaching it a little bit differently. Um, and so what I wanted to do was just make sure. And so I saw that domestic violence is going to be on their agenda when they meet on January 4th. So I'd like to kind of jump into that meeting and just see how they're handling it. But in the meantime, I volunteered to do some things and I just wanted to let you know what I've done um, because I've told you that um, it, uh, according to, again, this is just completely from the, the uh, NPD website, um, that there is a partnership, a grant, with the center, I always forget the name of it, formerly known as the Women's Center at UMass, um, with individuals who work in communities, Belchertown is included with Northampton, um, two individuals whose names and direct cell phone numbers who work for you, the UMass Women's Center um, are on the website and in many places and um, victims well, or anyone that has any concerns or questions or issues about domestic violence are encouraged, told to call these numbers. Um, again, not a 911 kind of an immediate situation. So I just wanted to see what these two women, I'm making the assumption that they're both women are doing. I've contacted them both. Um, and I'm just a little concerned that no one has gotten back to me. And I've also contacted the UMass Center. Now I know UMass is on an on again, off again situation, but I know they're reviewing phone calls and emails. I just wanted to see what that partnership is. I, I you know, I'm, I'm a little cynical and I just wanna make sure it's not name only and just kind of something plopped in there to get some grant money. I, I, I'm sorry to be so crass about that. So I haven't heard from them either. I'm going to continue to pursue that angle if you are all okay with that. But if I find that the alternatives committee is doing the same thing, you know, I definitely will back away from that. Um, Cynthia, who didn't get back to you? Uh, the two individuals who are listed on the NPD website, again, they're not employees of the NPD. They're employees of the UMass Women's Center. I'm going to call it Community Resource Center. It's called, it's called the Center for Women and Community. Yes, thank you so much, Nick. Yeah, Center for Women and Community. So they, they are actually employed through a grant through the center. And so, um, and I've talked to the center before, like maybe three or four weeks ago about this partnership, but I want to find out, I mean, I don't know if it's, I'm too bold to ask, but how much is the grant? How long is the grant? How, you know, how do you divide your time between Belchertown and Northampton? Just some of those things so we can see how readily available these folks are, but also what exactly are they doing? Because it sounds like they're doing non police work. And so if we can identify that as part of our you know, recommendation where some of the domestic violence issues um, can be allocated to another place other than NPD. So um, 
So I'm going to just continue unless I get some more information or feedback from alternatives. It's like, you know, stay out of this area. This is our area. Um, I just like for them to respond. And so the other thing that I'm very interested in, and I don't know the process for doing this, um, folks, I don't know if it's Nick or through Dan, but I have brought up that of the 18,000 plus hours of training that occurred in 2019, for all aspects at NPD, 159 of those hours were devoted to domestic violence. And I would just like to query NPD as to what exactly um, um, those, those 159 hours of training were. Now, I know a lot of people said training doesn't help, training doesn't do anything, but I think it would be good if we knew that. And um, I also noticed Lois, thank you, Lois, for reminding me about Safe Passage. I have contacted Safe Passage as well. She put it in the chat there um, because I wanna get their sense of how their role is on domestic violence and partnership with NPD. Um, unfortunately, they have not responded to me. Um, so those are my contacts. Um, my specific request is that training. I don't know if you folks think that's a legitimate request, if it's gonna tell us anything, but I'm just kind of curious as to what type of training NPD is getting in um, domestic violence. And then finally, I don't want to lose this thing that's swirling around the full commission and us about complaints that are levied against police officers and the disposition of those complaints, the process of how those complaints are handled. I, I don't want, know. Cynthia, I want, I want to keep that issue as its own issue. Uh, that's not on the list of services. We need to discuss that as a group. So okay. uh, I, I will make sure to add that uh, to Super. what we're talking about. Great. But, Any feedback on this issue of asking NPD about the training for domestic violence? Go ahead, Nambi. Yeah, uh, Cynthia, thank you for your whole report. I, I really appreciate it. I, I feel like I'm getting a lot just from learning just the outlines of what you said. And specifically on the thing you asked about training, I'm of the view that we should um, know something about training and comment on training. And to me, one of the interesting things to know is the sort of the absence of training. So again, though having training doesn't assure that the people will, will use the training, certainly the absence of training or the lack of any attention to it is, is worrisome and worth commenting on. So, so you're kind of being able to characterize the number of hours and then it can go further to say that the type and then to find out whether whether that is state of the art you know we can in the realm of mental health there are now standard practices that are well established critical incident kinds of training or crisis intervention training i mean um that that you know we would expect to see in a police department and if that was absent that would be of note and i think the same thing can come from your work so i really hope that that uh, you pursue that and i guess i've got a question for you um connected to a comment, which is that you know, given you know, national data suggesting that in this pandemic, there may be an especially high risk of domestic violence. Um, I wonder, you know, what, as you were contacting people listed on websites about domestic violence, did you feel that had you been calling with a domestic violence crisis that you would have been able to reach somebody? So is it the case that you have not been, uh, no one responded to you because you you went through a non-emergency channel and, and that's why you think you were not responded to, but there were clearly emergency channels and people, you had a sense that responses are available. I mean, so what, what, given that you sort of interface with the system, do you feel, do you have any reaction to that question of, are people at home under the pandemic not being attended to? Or are you worried about that given the fact that you haven't been responded to? I guess that's, I'll just leave it there. Yeah, without knowing the actual, um what the elements of that grant and partnership are. Maybe these two individuals, you know, have the holiday week off or something. I don't want to jump to assumptions as to, I don't want to put it on them. I'm just reporting out that I haven't heard. And I think if it's fair enough to say it is a holiday week um, and maybe I just need to give it a couple more days and I'm going to, you know, just, I'm going to stay with it and keep contacting the center um, because they work under the center. So I, I don't want to, jump to an assumption, but you know, Namdi, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, if, if I were in a crisis situation, I'd be doing 911 right now, right? I mean, I, or I'm, I might have, if I had a question like, should I call or not call one of those two cell phone numbers that are available? Um, and if I did, I would not be getting a response. Now, again, I left my name 
my number, who I am, what I was looking for. And so maybe they felt they had to kind of shoot that up the chain <laughs> before they responded. So I want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt here. So yeah. um, if, if we don't hear in a few days, if I don't hear in a few days, and if you want me to continue to pursue, you know, then I think that's another another issue that we could talk about. That's yeah, a great I question. Think, I think we want to be able to say with some confidence what we think the existing system in place is. You know, kind yeah. of if you have a domestic violence crisis, what what is currently happening and, and your ability to speak to the people involved and, and their, their ability to kind of comment on their partnership or lack thereof with police, all that I think is really relevant because we're gonna then be suggesting replacement or abolishment or whatever we're gonna do, but it should be with some clear statement of what is the current state and especially what happens when, when there are gaps, with holidays and you know people have domestic crises. And so like, it, let's say we got rid of this whole system, but do we need to have something in place just for holidays or, you know, like what exactly is the situation for emergencies? Because people will have domestic violence crisis, crises all, all over the, you know, the year. But I think this is, a, you know, great work you're doing. Thank you for it. No, no, no problem. And safe passages, you know, I'm a little concerned about them because I think, I thought they would respond kind of quickly, but we'll, we'll see. Let's just, you know, I maybe go, I'm going to try different channels to get through that. Um, so um, any feeling about submitting the request for the training? Nick, do you do that? Does Dan do that? Um, to, see, to see exactly what training there, there is? If, if could, you could, all are interested. Could, could you submit your request? I, I, Noah, let me just see if you know anything about this. Could you submit your request to Dan? Uh, or would it go to you, Noah, to, um, to be submitted to the police? You can send it to me and I can just send it to Dan. Probably is the safest way. Um, yeah. Fair enough. I, I have, and let, David, did you want to say anything? Okay. Um, uh, Cynthia, I have one, one thing I, I just want to add. Um, Alex wrote um, in, in, their, in their draft report, um, he, he wrote, about two and a half pages of very interesting stuff on domestic violence. And I just, I wanted to make sure that you had been able, that, that you knew about it or were able to read it. Uh, you know, that was the report that was sent <clears throat> prior to the full commission meeting. Yes. I think, and so I did skim it because it came right before the meeting, but I, I think you've got something that you want me to kind of pay attention to, so I, I think I better reread it. I, I think I think you you should, because I think it will tell you what the alternatives committee is doing and what you may be able to contribute. Okay. Um, um, he he, um, he really he makes a very far-reaching effort to um, to summarize all the different elements of challenges <laughs> in responding to, to domestic violence. And uh, uh, some of it's uh, more theoretical and then some of it's more about what, what's happening. But I don't think, and this is more in our realm, I don't think they are clear exactly what is happening in Northampton, in the Northampton Police Department. And I, I support your finding out more about what the trainings are, but I also think it's essential, just like I totally agree, Namdi saying, I need to find out about this homeless officer. I think we need to find out exactly what does this, the, the Center for Women and Community think they, their relationship is with the police and what does Safe Passages think yeah. their relationship is with the police. That, and, that was the angle I was going down, Nick, yeah. And I think that would be very helpful. Great. I'll continue to pursue that if the committee wants us to go in that direction. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, um, <clears throat> I feel like there's two related agenda items 
for us to move into. And um, one is um, uh, clarifying our role and, and watching and, and, and clarifying what it is we want to do with our committee. Um, we, we were perceived as uh, having a little bit of mission creep and I, it's, I, I call it mission overlap. Uh, uh, but I think we need to clarify what it is we want to focus on. And I'd like to see if we can clarify our understanding of what's being asked of us for the interim report. And that may not be, I, I, I'd like to, I guess I'd like to start off with that because that, that might be the first order of business. Um, what, a, another way to put it might be, what was your takeaway from the full commission meeting as to what we need to be doing right now for the interim report. And I, I almost think that what we were doing, are doing is defining the status quo, what is happening. And they're moving, I think alternatives is moving beyond that to, to move to the solution. So are we, identifying the problem or researching the problem. It may not even be a problem. I don't know. Um, doing that legwork because we said we were all going to start with the um, website and what we found there and what questions were generated from the website. And so are we reporting on here's the status quo? Is that, is that an accurate uh, depiction of what we're doing? Yeah, I, I, I think that's right. I, I want, one thing I would add to what Cynthia's saying is, um, uh, you know, I don't think we're simply duplicating or summarizing what the website says. I guess we're sort of, we're, we're summarizing the status quo, maybe through a little bit of a, a lens or a filter. And I want to be careful about it because I, I'm, I, I don't want to think of myself as only looking for problems per se. I, like, I don't want to be going with the bias that it's a problem. I think I'm, what I'm wanting to do is to, Think what questions occur to me, um, especially at the interim stage. I think right now I want to I want to think what is the status quo and what what questions are implied by what appears like what do I want to know more about given what, given given what I think I understand about the status quo something like that at the interim stage. I feel like that's what we can offer, um, and maybe some things are so obviously deficient or broken that we would be willing even now to say you know this should change. But, but I'm not sure that the interim report has to, from us, has to say that right now. But that's what I would add. Want to add anything, David? Um, you know, I'm not, not, I don't really have much to add. I mean, I, I expressed my view at the full commission meeting. I, I think we're going into way too much detail for me. Or, I mean, I, I thought this interim report was going to be three or four pages of here's what goes on in Northampton now. And, and it's really very easy to summarize. It's a traditional police department. These are the things that police officers do. Um, and to basically say our charge was to look at the Northampton Police Department with an idea towards reform in the wake of the um, uh, shootings uh, over last summer. And we, and, and to try to state very broadly um, things that almost everybody can agree on. Um, you know, so that we don't spend a lot of time debating, well, are we in agreement on that? Or are we not? So for example, um, you know, we, we, something like we've, uh, our preliminary research uh, um, indicates that, that a majority or the vast majority or however you want to put it of the commission 
uh, is of a mind that many of the functions of the Northampton Police Department can be done as well or better by unarmed um, city um, employees, um, or in some cases by private uh, entities. Um, I mean, that's just, just, and then, and then we could sort of tick them off, you know. Um, these are the things that we are looking at at this time. <clears throat> Traffic enforcement, you know, with a, with a one sentence explanation. For example, because I'm doing traffic enforcement. Traffic enforcement, the commission has become aware that many cities are moving away from using police for traffic enforcement. We are looking at other communities, how they're handling that, how that would be staffed, what their powers would be, et cetera. End of section of the report. Um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just felt like, um, as I expressed at the commission meeting, I, I, I don't mean to denigrate what Alex and Carol did. I, I, thought, I, I agreed with virtually everything in the report. It just didn't read like an interim report to me. It, it read more like, a, um, as I said, a sociology uh, paper, a critique of contemporary society or something. And I, and I think we, I, I, I really, don't think it's wise to go down that road, but I don't know. There seems to. <clears throat> so anyway, that, 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 those are my only thoughts, Nick. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, that's really all that's on my mind right now. Yeah, can I, David, just to uh, piggyback on what you're saying, you know, it occurs to me that when you say that Northampton is a traditional police department, I think that's probably true, but it might be worth our commission Spelling that out, I, I totally take and, and agree with you, David. That we don't we we don't need to. We should be mindful of not writing excessively. But I I think it's sometimes worth saying what we mean by a traditional police department. So I'm going to speak to my realm of um, school resource officers for a minute and just sort of say I can imagine writing a paragraph that says something like, like most um, cities in the state or the, in the Commonwealth, you know, Northampton's police chief you know, appointed a school resource officer who for up, who had been in the schools up until this particular time. And then just give a, a brief summary of kind of the, the current status of that role. Um, so on the one hand, if we just said we're a traditional place, we could say, and we have a school resource officer, we could say that, but, but to the extent that there's something different about it, we might want to comment on that. I, in, in traffic, we might say, you know, we are traditional, our officers in Northampton, um, you know, monitor speed violations, like maybe even referencing the, um, the incident reports or the, I mean, uh, in some ways sort of saying the, the data suggests that they're involved in these kinds of traffic encounters in Northampton. I can imagine something that just gives a brief sense of what, in what sense are we traditional? Because I could imagine again, another section that talks about say use of force or use of firearms. And if you look at the, our website, one of the striking things to me is there's some language they're saying that, that officers have not used firearms in Northampton in the last like two decades uh, in enforcing uh, law. So, so again, saying we're traditional is great, but I think following it up with the particulars of Northampton and saying, well, you know, in some way sort of characterizing, how does this play out in Northampton? And it might even play out in a way that then suggests reform or not. Um, I, I, so I can see it in school reform and maybe, maybe in all in, in domestic violence as, as uh, Cynthia learns more. Again, she might say, you know, it interacts with this community center for women, safe passage, like in a very specific way, and then comment a little bit about the ways in which that intersection is more or less tight. So something like that, that sort of takes one step beyond where traditional and in some way specifies, how is this playing out in Northampton currently? And maybe ends with a statement like, we are aware that other regions are, yeah. are, are doing reforms in this domain. So we're aware that um, Amherst has voted to get rid of its school resource officer it, which is relevant to whatever decision Northampton makes, you know, and we're aware that Berkeley has put so and so into traffic positions, which is relevant to what we might do. So I can imagine something like that, like almost like three pieces where we sort of say we're traditional, say how it plays out here and then end with some kind of gesturing to to possible topics for reform. Um, I don't know. And, and maybe that could be done in a in a paragraph or two for each of our little topics or just a paragraph. I, I want to say to, I want to kind of speak to two aspects of this. 
One is tack, um, uh, one is spe specifically what kind of interim report we want to submit. And I'm, I'm speaking right now knowing that uh, Dan and Lois are both with us. Um, and I'm glad to have, have you present. Um, but the, the, the question is, I, I think David raises an interesting question of how much do we want to go into in the interim report? That's, it's a, it's a somewhat tactical question because it, we still have a ways to go as a full commission kind of hashing out some of the issues that have been raised. We're still um, trying to come up with the specific recommendations, which we've been asked to do, uh, that have to come out at the end. We don't have to do them now. Um, and um, and I, I think, so that there's the tactical question. And then there's um, uh, the, 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 the task of the commission and just to look at what we were tasked with, um, we, we were tasked with rethinking what police services could be delivered by others, rethinking how we structure and fund community safety and recommend reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures. And then there's some more specifics, but the, the ultimate goal is um, it for us is to come up with concrete specific recommendations. That's my understanding that 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 doesn't mean there and 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 the the draft from the alternatives committee, I think, is a great basis for discussion and 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 David, you're responding to its theoretical and aspirational nature as opposed to specific we're not at the point of making specific recommendations. Um, so I, I think it's a tactical question of how much in depth and how, how concrete, uh, how um, extensive a report is required at this time. Uh, I, I do think, David, that um, we should narrow our scope for the interim report as much as possible. I, 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 I think that makes sense. Let me just take it one step further and and say what what is our contribution, our our subcommittee's contribution to this report? What do we think the contribution should be? And I think that I think we're starting to discuss that. I think Namdi, you're 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 starting to uh, outline it, and Cynthia as well. Uh, what um, that we were, we want to talk about what we see. I ha I do have Elizabeth. I wish she were here in the back of my mind, because I also think we need to carry a theoretical perspective, a lens of, of not just um, what is the status quo, but what is it in relationship um, to the problems that led to the development of this commission. I hope, I, I, again, I'm not being real specific, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that we don't wanna just say, for example, it's not enough just to say it's a traditional police department, I think being specific how we're traditional, but saying what, what are the things that a traditional police department um, False work. Where does it work for what we want to accomplish? Is that does that make sense? It does, and, Nick. Thank you for that. Can I just quickly follow up with what you said because it, it, it clarifies a little bit of what, what I was trying to say. So I, I, now I'm envisioning saying that you know each of us may be trying to talk about our little thing, making the point that you know again like many departments. The, the Northampton Police Department assigned a school resource officer. That's one thing we could say. I would want to follow up though with some specific details 
about what, what we know about Northampton, maybe through the lens that you just described, Nick. So one thing I would want to include in my statement is uh, we have reports, uh, some of this was in the, in, the, um, in the Hampshire Gazette, of uh, parents of color, students of color, feeling uncomfortable with the presence of police in the schools and, and complaining, not about the particular officer's actions, but, but about the officer's presence being sort of unnecessary. So that would be specific to Northampton. So this is a complaint here, and it was part of what led Northampton specifically to vote to not have that school resource officer anymore. There's other information that might be relevant, like the budget cut that forced the chief of police to decide to no longer have that person in the schools and to have him now assigned to patrol. But I do think our summary and what we can do as a subcommittee is to kind of talk particularly about the issues that, that are happening in Northampton that would need to be addressed based on Northampton related kinds of concerns. Um, again, you know, we've heard several community comments about um, people feeling over-policed in the community. And, and, and maybe that those kinds of things could show up in our, in our part if we wanted to. But um, you know, depending on what Cynthia learns about domestic violence and what others learn, I think it's an effort to sort of say, how are the issues that, are, that, that led to the national conversation playing out in Northampton? Some of it might be uh, positive and more favorable. For example, I, I think we're gonna find not very many um, accusations of the use of force um, that, that have happened nationally. I don't think we're gonna hear and have any evidence of that kind of use of force in Northampton. And it might be worth saying that, you know, that we don't have police brutality complaints. I, we don't know, and we won't know until we get those reports, but I'm saying whatever we can do to kind of talk about how these issues play out here in Northampton um, would I think be useful going forward um, to the decisions. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I, I was really not aware until the onset of this meeting that we were charged with, I guess, coming up with our portion of the interim report. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure it's really a good use of anyone's time to be having three separate pieces of a report that somebody's going to try to put together. Um, and, you know, I, I apologize. I guess I really, I just I'm thinking of this in a much different way than what other people are. I think that this, I think that this whole report, um, you know, we usually have a pretty full-throated discussion of everything at our commission meeting. And I think that the way, uh, that this is going to work best is, is to sort of hash these things out at the commission meeting and then for Dan, uh, well, it's just Dan now to, to um, you know, delegate two people to write a fairly brief draft report based on the consensus that we can reach on broad things. And some of them may be things as simple as the things that brought us here. You've already referenced, Andy, um, in light of the, 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 uh, 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 the, the police violence against um, uh, people of color. Uh, uh, I mean, again, I'm, I'm being really general, probably general for everyone else's liking, but I, I, I just think that the effort should be to identify broad things that we can all agree on. Uh, and and, and the, the gist of the report ultimately being that, you know, we, we, we've accepted the challenge to make changes, and these are the things that we are looking at. There is value, uh, and, and you know, with respect to the the point that while well, we haven't had shootings here, we don't uh, we don't have any evidence to believe that uh, the Northampton Police Department uh, is, engages in excessive gun play. I mean, my response to that is we shouldn't sit back and wait for it to happen. Um, the 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 evidence is overwhelming that. Um, Armed, armed police uh, are 
at the risk of grossly overgeneralizing, armed police are a problem. And um, that there is an inherent value in reducing the footprint of armed, uniformed people in our community. Um, I may not be making much sense here. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm kind of rambling and, and um, I'm just, uh, I, I guess I'm just hung up on what the nature of this report is and who should be writing it and um, whether it really makes sense for each of the three committees to be sort of doing their own report and then trying to meld them together. First of all, I think it's going to lead to a very long report, but anyway. David, I, I'm sympathetic to your comments. I, I, I think you always lead us in a, in a pretty good direction of, of simplifying things. I, I, what I want to add, uh, echoing Elizabeth a little bit is, I don't think we have, though we probably could identify some overarching things we all agree about. I wouldn't want to gloss over the things we don't agree about. And I do think that the interim report should at least hint at the fact that, that, that there is, um, uh, that there are a variety of views. And, and, and so I, I think simply presenting the consensus um, may not lead to the best vision as an interim or as a final report. I'm imagining in the end, you know, the mayor or the city council will, will will benefit from having strong statements that might point in different directions. I think they're going to want to have a, a list of options and menus that they can go from and deliberate on. So I think us, so at the risk of making it a little more complicated, I think, yes, the high level, what we agree on is great. And maybe some hint of items still up for debate. I, so even at the broad level of, are we working towards abolishment? Or are we working towards, you know, some kind of level of, uh, of reform, or do, do people really feel like you know only minor changes are needed? I'm, I'm not, you know, I think that there's a range of views on that. Um, so, so I wouldn't want the interim report to say that we you know all agree that you know dramatic changes are are are, are needed. Um, even though I think many of us feel that major changes are needed. I, I don't want to go too far with this, but I, I think something that says here's some consensus views, and here are some other things that are that are still up for discussion, and we're still awaiting more data and. Um, and that does, that second part doesn't need to be complete because I imagine there's, there's a long list of things that everybody disagrees about, but at least a few things that we can say you know are still under discussion. Um, but I so it's a combination of your point, David, with with just sort of saying let's not let's not give the impression that there's more uniformity than than exists. And I would say yeah, I'm, I think I think even the, the existence of our committee stands in in contrast with other committees. Like some people believe that what we're doing is a total waste of time to to spend any time. On, top, on commenting on what's happening with the police department at all. Some would argue is useless and why bother doing this, right? So I, I, would, I would not want that view to prevail in the final, in the interim report. I would like the interim report to say, some of us believe it's worthy of our time to at least come, uh, characterize the, the policies and services. And that's, you know, that's one view and others think we should be much more full-throatedly all about you know, uh, reforms. I'll stop talking, thanks for listening. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we're really disagreeing on much of anything, Namby. I, I'm, uh, I, I, I mean, I, you know, again, the risk of repeating myself. I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking about things that I think we, that, you know, to take an overly simplistic, we, we're in agreement that some change is needed. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I mean, maybe we can take it one step further. Uh, um, uh, the, 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 our, our many meetings at this point um, have uh, uh, enable us to say that there is a consensus that we need to reduce the size and footprint of the Northampton Police Department. Now, maybe there's some people that would object to that, but, um, but that's my point is, is broad statements like that. I, I'm really reluctant to see us get pinned down into anything. I couldn't agree with you more, Nambi, that I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't like, for example, just to take an example, you know, we've done a lot of talking about mental health and we've talked about the, these three different models that, that people have talked about. We certainly wouldn't want to go there. Um, we could say, you know, here are some of the things that other communities are doing and these are things that we are looking at. Um, and, and this is one of the ways in which, uh, in, in that, 
there, there, there is consensus that uh, on this commission that the um, uh, the needs of people with mental illness and mental health problems can be better met than they are currently being met by the Northampton Police Department. If that sounds really vague, I'm trying to be really vague. Um, to stuff that, that that conveys that we have not made any final decisions, but that we have accepted what I think is our charge, which is to work towards reform and to work towards the kind of reform that is going to make this community safer for everyone, but particularly for people of color, because the, the, those are the people that have been most victimized. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's premature for us to talk about a consensus on anything because I think a lot of people have, um, myself included, you know, I'm not readily voicing what my um, concerns are. I'm, I'm so focused on whatever it is we recommend that it actually can be done. That's what I'm focused on. I mean, that's my sole focus, that it actually can get through a city council and an executive branch. So that's, that's my world, right? I don't need to put that out just yet, <laughs> you know? And we have other people who, who, and I'm gonna call activists, who really, really are coming up with some great alternatives and we have to consider those. And I think this is the time, the preliminary report, to me, it's a paragraph of each section, maybe an introductory paragraph of what our, what our subcommittee, the direction it's going in. I know some people think it's overlap. We, we don't think so, but it might be, but we're willing to step back. Um, and I'm, I'm not looking for consensus, even on the mental health issue that, you know, the Northampton Police Department haven't, haven't served the mental health population very well. well Folks with mental health issues were, were foisted upon the Northampton Police Department. So maybe the consensus is we have a lot of individuals in our city with mental health issues and we need to take care of that. You know what I mean? And let's not uh, um, put it on the police department to do it because they're gonna do a crappy job of it, let's face it. And, and the same thing with domestic violence. Domestic violence is a societal issue. So what's the best way of, of trying to, to have these partnerships? So I'm, I'm more for, and I think we've been saying this, a very general report. I don't wanna speak on behalf of anyone else on any of the other subcommittees as to what they're thinking or what our consensus is. We haven't had a vote on anything um, in the full time we've been doing this, you know? We've been giving, and this is wonderful, we've been giving opinions and we're reacting to those opinions, et cetera. So, um, I, I, I'm, I would go for a very general uh, uh, one to two pages about what our, what our subcommittee has been doing and what we're looking at and what maybe some of the things that concern us. You know, list those out in each one of our separate topics and the, and the things we don't have answers to, that we'd like to have answers to. I see it as formulaic, not um, taking a, um, a stance on anything at this point. In that regard, you know, we, we, I think there are a few more things that we really ought to at least talk about before um, we, we move on from our analysis of the services. I mean, I think we did those first six, but a couple that, that really jump out at me that we haven't even talked about yet. Um, and that if you look at the man hours expended on them, it really is sort of a fit, is this whole idea of, of property checks. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I really, and I mean, this leads me to think I do want to at some point have the chief or her delegate. I, I really want to know what that is and, and, and how one gets a property check. Um, another one is that I've noticed in looking at the man hours during the day, fairly high percentage, at least in the year that I looked at on the day shift, a fairly high number of animal calls. 
why are why are the police responding to animal calls? I don't understand that. Because the animal control department is under the police department. Yes. Okay. So that so so maybe that's a a, a structural uh, yeah. uh, problem. Um. But um. But anyway, I I I, I do think bef before we um, move on, and I, and I'm in a, in agreement with Nick that we we do need to talk about the complaint process as a separate thing. Um, but while we're still talking about police services, maybe we should, you know, expand at least to find out what those things are. I mean, obviously, Cynthia, you already know more than I do about the animal um, issue. Um, and there was, and, and, and then the other one, which I think it's a little more dicey for me anyway is disturbances a lot of responses to disturbances um, and i know that a lot of the abolitionist people would say well the police just make it worse um, because they're not trained in de-escalating and, and i have an open mind i mean may, that may be true i don't know uh, I, I don't know what the alternatives are to that but you know as kind of uh channel um, Cynthia here, you know, we need to know what we're doing before we propose what we want to change. Um, so I, anyway, I, I, I think at some point we ought to, for the sake of full discussion of the quote unquote services aspect of this, figure out if there are, are other things than the two that I just threw out, three that I just threw out there that we want to at least touch on. Yeah, I, you know, David, I agree with you completely. And I don't, I care everyone talking about those disturbances and the um, property checks. Um, where are people getting that information? Is that clear on the website? And if um, we have some more questions, let's articulate the question and pose it to the chief. I, I, I just, I want to respond to you, David. I, I feel I'm thinking two things. One is I'm, I'm wondering if we want to submit some kind of report just for our committee that summarizes the direction and focus of our committee. Um, that's a question. But when you start asking about man hours, property checks, animal calls, disturbances, I kind of go back to these are functions of a traditional police department. And, and we know that Northampton, while, while striving to be a better police department, is a traditional police department. Uh, you want to say something? The, the, what, what I'm saying is that these are all components of traditional policing. Um, and uh, uh, it, the, uh, the, if you were to ask um, the police, they probably would say, uh, these are proactive, uh, some of these things. They're, um, uh, I can't think of the word, but uh, the, the police presence uh, has a uh, purpose in and of itself. Um, Prevent and right? preventive. Thank you. There, it's preventive. <laughs> it's a simple word. Um, and but the concept being that that do we want to recommend a shift in 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 the conceptualization of policing, and how can our committee contribute to that? Because you, you're, if you ask about property checks, uh, or even ask about disturbances, people are told, call the police if you have a question. Uh, see something, say something. Uh, it's right out there. And, um, and what is saying something? Who do you say it to? Well, you say it to the police. And it's in the fabric of both our what, what's been asked of the police and what the police strive to do. Um, and um, I, 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 
I feel like um, I feel like people have been trying to tell us to to kind of how can we shift the paradigm a little bit? How can we change it so that we can start imagining something that would work differently? And it gets very, very thorny when we get specific. Um, but, um, but I think that we, we need to kind of look, our, I think our, our committee is tasked with describing um, what the police have done to try to shift um, their paradigm. And I, 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 I do look for, I do hope we can get the police chief in at some point to talk about um, what she thinks that is needed because we may recommend something completely different, but the police also need to change as well. Both need to be happening. And, um, and, and, and part of our mandate is to help, um, to help look at um, changes within the police along with alternatives and, and footprint uh, reduction. But we, we also have the mandate of looking, what are the police doing that, that um, we want our police to be doing differently? Um, and in the context of our mandate. Um, so I, I kind of bounced all over the place here, um, but uh, I started off by saying, what kind of report do we want to submit? But then it's what direction do we want to move in? Yeah, but well, it sounds, Nick, are you, are, you, are you agreeing that the points that David raised are worthy points for us to, in, in the future, focus on? It doesn't sound like you're totally objecting to those points that he raised, right? Like that we would in the future look at property checks, animal calls, disturbance responses, or are you saying we shouldn't be, just because we should take it for granted this is no, normal? No, but I, I think we should try to understand what's the concept? What's, what is it we want to see shifted? What, what, why, why do we want them to stop property checks? I mean, just because it takes too much time uh, or, uh, or, or, is it not, or is it something else? Um, uh, it, it, it's not. It's it, it, we can micromanage their time, but but I what I want to say is what I think about is what is it about the policing model that we want to shift? And it's easy to say. It's easy to say. Let's just not have police. Um, but um, but there needs. That's another task entirely is looking for alternative solutions. But, but we also, I think, need to understand what, what is it that the police do because there's still gonna be violence and that needs to be addressed. Um, and there's going to, to be situations that you still want um, a, a smart, capable uh, um, uh, uh, police force that un, that actually the best way that Cynthia is saying, you know, we w I want to see something that really can happen here. Well, the best way that something could happen is if the police could actually um, support something about it. Um, that that would make a big difference. And I think there there are elements of what we're talking about that the police uh, might support. Now I know what I'm saying is. Uh, um, uh, not um, imaginable for some, or it doesn't seem facilitative for some people. Um, but I, I think that um, there's going to be some combination of both that that um, uh, that will exist uh, in the in in the best proposal. You know, I think. I'm sorry, Cynthia. Did you want to? I did. But go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I think we, we, we've kind of danced around this issue several times in prior meetings. Um, one service that seems to me falls squarely within our mandate that we have barely touched on is the 911 service. Um, that's a service that the police uh, uh, provide. Um, and um, 
I, I think, you know, we at one of our prior meetings talked about the fact that at least as I foresee it, um, the 911 uh, um, operators would have to be much better trained, would have to be much better able to divert calls um, to people other than um, police uh, uh, um, to, to handle. Um, and, um, you know, Nick, I, I mean, look, I, I'm, I, I, I've defended uh, for 40 years some pretty scary people um, who have done some pretty awful things. And um, I, I don't think uh, that in my lifetime, I'm going to see a society where we don't need armed police officers for anything. The, the problem is, is, is that what we need them for is such a very small fraction of what they're doing now. And that I think that there is inherent value in getting them out of things that they are not the best trained nor best equipped to do. But also we, we have to look at the, this in historical context. Um, people of color are afraid of the police. Many people of color are. Um, and um, for that reason alone, we should have fewer police officers, uh, armed people responding to calls that can be handled by unarmed, ununiformed, un non-confrontational public servants. So I don't know, <laughs> we're all rambling here tonight. I, I'm not disagreeing with that, David. I, I, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, we, I was just focusing on the other, the other side of it, the, this, you know, the services that we've been looking at. The alternatives is, is absolutely um, a, a piece of this and 911, I, you know, as you know, I, I feel 911 is central. Yeah, I mean, and I, I just don't think that, you know, while I am one of those who is in favor of this in the, this debate that we've been having of whether we should reach out to the police. I'm, I'm in favor of that. I've said that before. On the other hand, I think it would be naive to think that we're going to get any serious buy-in um, from the Northampton Police Department or any police department. They may well buy into- Right. right. To, to, you know, reducing their role on mental health calls, for example. But I think we're going to get very little buy-in on, on anything else. Um, um, but again, I, I do think that we need to engage with them at some point. But I, I do so with my eyes wide open as to where it's likely to lead. I just, yeah. I just feel we're really jumping we were talking about the preliminary report and now we're jumping to the conclusion again. And so I'm, I'm just hoping that we can get back to what we wanna do with the preliminary report. And just, if you remember the full commission, we talked about this idea of a different department. Maybe it's called safety, you know? So I think there's some synergy moving in a, in a direction of removing what I'll call the social service aspects that we, um, saddled the police with over decades that, that you know, there's the 211 number versus the 911 number. 211 number still exists. Um, so I just, are we trying to have this conversation again about how to solve this in some type of an infrastructure? Are we having the conversation about should we invite the police in? Or are we having a conversation about the I just want us to get I, I, your question is good. I started it off and I'd like to bring it back, rope us in a little bit and bring it back to the interim report and what we feel our obligation is at this point. I think our obligation is to tell the full commission what it is that we've been doing. <laughs> and does, do, do, do we feel that uh, one of us uh, or more than one of us should 
put together a brief statement about that. I mean, my sense is we have an introductory statement of where we were going and we each have an individual uh, report of what we've been doing um, based on those service areas. This is what we found. This is what we want to find out more information on. No recommendation, no mention of consensus, but just sort of a, a stat, the status quo, the structural I don't see it being more than two or three pages. Like you know, David was saying, let's not get too sociological at this point. I mean, it's a preliminary report and I'm not dismissing some of the great work that other people have been doing. It's fantastic. Um, but I'm not sure what the, we haven't been given any guidance as to what the format is going to be. We haven't been given any guidance as to what people would like to see in the report. So that's what I would like to see. There may be another uh, committee member that wants to see something completely different, but we have to have that form to, it's due the seventh, I think, isn't it? <laughs> and who's gonna write it? I have no idea. No, I agree with you. I, I agree with that, oh. Cynthia. I think that's a good suggestion. And, and I think um, we, we've already submitted something fairly brief, which could be edited down and joined together. Um, um, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel from what we've already done. Um, can, can I ask you, David, what you're referring to? Are, are you referring to um, the thing that I wrote up on, on December 20th or? Well, we at, was it last meeting or two meetings ago, I think we, we, we were asked to summarize, to send you a, a, a summary of what we had done. And I, mine was, I think, two and a half or three pages, and um, and I and I'm I'm lining up with Cynthia here on the idea of brevity. Uh, I mean, I, I I would go back and take that and cut it into you know a half a page or three quarters of a page, and we do that with each of the um, areas we we've, we've talked about. And there's our contribution, uh, and you know, a sentence or two at the end that these are other areas that we have not yet fully investigated, such as wellness checks. Uh, yeah, that's some, Lois. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Wellness checks. Someday I'll tell you about the case I had years ago with a wellness check. Um, it's it's very abusive. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you, as the judge in, in my case said, you know, you take a day off work, it doesn't mean the police have to come break down your door, which is basically what they did in that case. Yeah, so, so those things you just ticked off, um, David, those are areas for us to explore that can be in the report, wellness checks, disturbances, property checks. Right, they can be, yeah, I mean, they can explore be, those at all. Yeah, that we can, they can be kind of an addendum. These are things that we would like to explore but haven't gotten to yet. Um, um, and another suggestion for the report that I, I would be happy to volunteer to, to, to do is um, I can take a look at the minutes that we have for all of our subcommittee meetings and try to write a sort of, you know, saying something that we, the subcommittee you know, began meeting on X date um, and, and ma major topics that we've addressed over our subcommittee meetings are, and I would probably have a list so I, I could do that, take a look at the minutes we've approved and try to pull it together and then just kind of make that an introductory paragraph to this whole thing. Um, if that would be useful, Nick. I'm just think, trying to think just so this doesn't all land on you. Um, well, that's, that's fine. Um, uh, Namdi, I, I wrote up a, a summary of what we've done. Oh, you, um, you're done, okay, that already. And you have, you should have that, right? Okay. Yeah, I probably do, I'll have to look for it. Okay, Yeah. and, and you can abstract from that. Okay, and, and we could just use that instead. I don't mean to reinvent the wheel. I was I, just thinking. I'm if, not attached to it. Okay, I'll look at what you did, and if you if they, if I feel like it doesn't it needs anything else from the I mean I would the goal is brevity, so being complete isn't important. Just being, just just having something that faithfully talks about the arc of our meetings. Yes. In some way, yeah. yeah. That's that's what it does. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a look at that and just give you a second opinion. Is there anything else that that you Nick you think that should be assigned to? Um, anybody that would help in pulling the report together um, other than uh, so it's what David said does that mean David are you suggesting we take what we already wrote 
and do a shorter version to submit? Or is that what you, each of us should take, should shorten yeah, that, our own? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, rather than reinvent the wheel, you know, we just take what we each of us wrote. And uh, as a matter of fact, you caught me. I was just starting to do that with my own. And, um, you know, in my case, it would be taking two and a half pages and, you know, trying to get it down to a half a page, which I think I can easily do for, you know. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can do it with my pieces as well. Um, I, I, actually, I, I don't know if mine is already in there, but I'll double check. Yeah. Now, um, in your piece, Nick, you sp made some specific recommendations, like the Cahoots program. Yeah, I, I won't. I won't. Okay. That, that I, I, I know where we're heading with this, and okay. I'm, I'm not going to go go down that road at this point. Okay. I'm going to say we're looking into these these yeah. things, but but I'm I'm more going to look at the model that currently exists. I'm going to focus on that, yeah. um, and 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 opportunities. Will um, the report reference in any way these complaints, uh, or is that something that we'll take up at another time? The thing the thing that we said we're going to talk about later was that be refer do you think, Should we reference that or not? Uh, can we can we if we have a plan for um a, a an interim report statement. Should we now talk about co the complaint process? Sure. sure. Let, let's let's put that out there. Yeah. Um. How? To just to summarize, we all agree that the way the current complaint process reads is. Um, internally um it's it's circular <laughs> and it doesn't ha ha have any a kind of outside review <clears throat> yeah. do, do we do we feel like we understand the complaint process did we get a response we requested to access to data of complaint. We want to see the actual complaint. Yes, I don't believe we did. I don't believe we got that. I haven't seen any response. No one's told me that we got one. So that, we, that would be great. I thought we submitted that through Dan, but I could be wrong. I will. So, did we submit that? I would like to verify that. Yes, it was submitted and uh, we have not heard back from that. And I can also tell you that the chief is on vacation this week as well. So we will probably not hear back. I mean, January 5th would be or 4th would be the soonest and I would be surprised if it was even then. Okay, thanks. Uh, Dan. We have a number of requests out. Um, but they're also taking time to to get back to us. Thank you. Is there anything else that anybody can think of that would help us besides knowing that list of complaints, help us understand the process better? Well, uh, I think that I need to take another look at it. Um, and uh, uh, um, try, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a ton of material out there on, um, uh, on citizen citizen review boards and citizen involvement, I mean, it, it's an area that's been studied. Uh, I mean, forever, um, it, it's been talked about. Um, uh, I, I can remember going to meetings uh, forty years ago about citizen review in uh, in, in Springfield. Um, Springfield has a, a, a fairly uh, comprehensive program, which I think I mentioned in one of our earlier conversations, we uh, found had a fatal flaw in it, but there was a lot of good aspects to it. Um, and um, I, I could certainly dig up uh, what they're doing in, in, in Springfield now. The other, the other thing that we need to uh, try to figure out is how this is all going to tie into what's being done uh, on the state level with the certification. Um, um, it, 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 it's, that's a little unclear to me um, as to what, what incidents of police misconduct 
this new state entity is going to investigate. Um, it's it's was my understanding that they're going to have the power to investigate um, these things, and I, I don't know how realistic that is, how meaningful it is, and 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 how much we want to buy into it as opposed to local community involvement and uh, um, governance of it. I mean, I don't. I have more questions than I do have answers about this right now. <clears throat> Can I quickly. Go ahead, Nandy. Real quick, could you share the, the fatal flaw if it's if it's not a long story? I'm I'm always curious to learn about things that people you know didn't think of and ended up being a huge problem. So what, what well, was the, the the fatal flaw in the Springfield's uh, system, as I recall, and I wish my partner were here because he did most of the work on it. Um, but we, I think I told you, we won this case at at, at trial. Um, but the fatal flaw was essentially that if the police and the uh, person who claimed to be abused gave different stories, it got categorized in such a way that it would always end up being unfounded. So it, it, it was really absurd. Right. I mean, unless you agreed with the police aversion of the events, the, the, the board, if they followed their rules, had to put in unfounded. So it was crazy. And, and um, I mean, we, I'm embarrassed that I can't explain it better. We explained no, no, it well no, 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 no. jury to rule in our favor uh, that it was, that it was, it, it was a flawed system, which allowed police misconduct to flourish and go unpunished in Springfield. Yeah. So, I mean, the current Northampton procedure for use of force, and we talked about this in a previous meeting, you know, is only based on every officer who's on the, on the scene, or, you know, files a report, and the only data we have is the consensus view of police officers about force. So I'm not surprised that there's a system that, that doesn't take, that doesn't weigh the feed, if the feedback from the person, the aggrieved person does not match the police officer's view, somehow it's not equal, it's, it's actually discounted. So, yeah, I think it's it's worth hearing how these things go wrong because at some point we want to. It, it leads us to know what questions to ask about what's going on here. I guess, um, Nick, I cut you off. You were going to say something, and I know we're close on time, so sorry. I wanted to say that I think we shouldn't be diverted by the new certification proposal from the state, and the reason I'm saying that is, I believe that the only thing that the state can do is take away somebody's certification, which will be an entirely separate process from anything that happens in the town of Northampton. It, it'll, it'll be, should this police officer be certified or not? I, I feel that there still will be a complaint process within our police department that <clears throat> And, and we don't know what's gonna happen with the certification if it, I mean, I don't think it should stop us from reviewing and looking at um, what the process is and suggesting uh, uh, a more meaningful process. And we know that there's a lot of um, uh, obstacles. We know that there will be union issues, we, labor issues. We, we know there will be other things, but I still think it's in our purview to understand the complaint process and make a recommendation. Yeah, I absolutely I agree. Okay. And, and understand what we'll get from the data too, is what have the complaints been, you know? Um, oh, that so too. I, That'll be part of it. Yeah, because that's really quite important because the process says, as I've said a couple of times here, is that we get to this place where if the officer has not committed a crime and has not violated a policy, they're basically innocent. But I would say that some of the things that we're most concerned about, like, People of color not feeling over policed or not wanting police officers in the schools will probably not be crimes, will not be violations of policy, and yet disturb the community, right? So what we're looking for is ways to kind of make those kinds of concerns and complaints visible and to make the department uh, required to respond to them. I'm not saying officers should be fired over this or go to jail over this, but right. that we should have some system that allows the police to be responsive to community concerns that are not crimes and that are not violations of policy. I mean, yep. to me, that's what's where I'm heading with this. Okay. Um, I'm aware of the time. I, I feel like 
I feel like what we've we've said so far is Nambi's going to put together a summary, and each of us is going to give a brief a briefer summary of our service reviews. Um, and in Nambi's summary, he will also include areas that we may yet want to explore. Um, so, um, and, and we are going to continue to review the complaint process um, uh, uh, in, in any way. In, 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 we're going to, when we get more information about it, um, and um, we will also, I, if we could find more, I think that we may have to hear directly from the police to understand it. I, I don't really understand it at this point, which brings us to our final um, issue is uh, uh, on the agenda, item on the agenda is um, consideration of a direct meeting with the Northampton police chief. Um, Let's, I would like to put out, where are we at with that? Uh, I'm in favor of it, but I think we should have some questions prepared before we invite her and that we agree. So we feel like it's a good use of her time and we think the questions are likely to yield useful answers for us, you know? Um, so, that, so that's my two cents. Yes, and let's figure out in our next meeting what to ask. I, I agree with Namdi, but it, it, is this something that we are dealing with as a subcommittee? I, I think this did come up and I don't remember how we resolved it, whether subcommittees should do this or whether the full commission should. David, it was referred to subcommittees. And, okay. and I think subcommittees will have different agendas to some extent, like we'll have different concerns. And so I think it makes some sense that we would do it that way. Okay, well, I agree with everything Namdi said then. Okay. Um, Cynthia, do, are you in favor or, or are you concerned? Yeah, I, um, a, a wise person on city council said to me, um, when I was kind of going through my city council list to ask people what they thought, said, you kind of don't want to do that in your full commission after an hour of public comment <laughs> when the police chief is going to be berated and therefore defensive. And I thought that was an interesting you know, way to put it <laughs> because it, I mean, the police chief and the police department have heard you know, what the concerns are. So, um, I would be in favor of it in subcommittee, but if the full commission wanted to do it, I'm not sure I would be in favor of that. And I don't know if it's gonna to go to full commission or whatever, but I, it really has to be specific questions. Um, you know, it, I was a little um, concerned when we asked the question about a strategic plan and the chief of police said there was no strategic plan. I think it's very interesting that there is no goals and objectives um, at all for what the mission <laughs> or how to carry out the yeah, mission. I'm going to add that. Yes, the strategic plan is still um, to be. I mean, not, it, but, but her response was because of COVID, you know, and I'm getting, I think we've all been getting that response about a variety of things. Well, your mail didn't come because of COVID or what, you know, whatever. But um, so, I mean, I would be looking for things like that, particularly the thing that I'm looking for is, you know, this discussion is going on in police departments throughout the whole country. We can't get away from it. So Northampton Police Department or Police Chief, what do you think? You know, what can you do to address what our citizens, are our residents are telling us? You know, that, that would be, you know, just a general question, but, but anyway. So. What would what would people like for our agenda to be for the next meeting? Include discussing questions. questions. For the, yeah. yeah. What? I'm sorry, Cynthia. Uh, questions for the the chief of police. For the police chief, yeah. And one thing to think about, uh, 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 just I don't know if you have feelings about this now, but it might be worth giving the police chief some of these questions ahead of time, or at least topics oh, yeah. that we're discussing ahead of time. So that you know, so there, so there's an opportunity to become prepared because the answer might not be in her head. It might be something she has to look up. Well, that's that's what we'll do. That that'll be on our agenda for next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but to come up with the questions and then share it with her and then invite yeah. her to, to answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I'd also like to just 
clarify our areas of focus, review them one more time. I feel like we generally did that today, but I think that uh, we should should revisit that. Yeah. Um, I also would somebody like to um, reach out to Elizabeth. I'm I'm very I'm, I'm missing her uh, and her perspective, and um, and I I feel she's a, an important part. Would would one of you um, just like to reach out to her? Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to. Maybe one more than one of us can do it. I, I, I'm happy to do it as one of the people to reach out to her. Um, you know, it's possible that this is this is the holiday week, and maybe there's some some reason she couldn't make the meeting. Right. But let's, yeah, she let's sent an email. Uh, she sent an email during this meeting, just apologizing that she would be unable to make this meeting. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. Okay. Thank yeah. you, David. Okay. And uh, also, should we do something about the wellness checks, disturbances, property checks? Should um, that yeah. be on the agenda as to how we're going to tackle that? Yeah, I mean, because it sounds like those are new items, and let's not forget them. I I, I agree with with them, and, and uh, David highlighted them um, as well as the as to discussion of the complaint process. And yeah, yeah, like more more on that on that issue. Um, just uh, to, just to, to, sorry, go ahead, David. No, no, I was just going to say that sounds like a pretty full agenda already. It does. Uh, it is. As a compliment I, to this, I'm sorry, go ahead, Cynthia. I, and I would hopefully I can report out and what I found out from Safe Passage and the, the Center for Women, Community, Life, Learning at UMass. And I'll report on housing. As a compliment to the thing that, that David raised about the, the property checks and such, I, I'd like to drill in a little bit on the question about officers who are responding to calls versus those who are sort of looking for trouble. I don't quite know how to phrase that second one, but I'm, I'm aware that in policing, there are different um, views about officers who are who passively wait to be called and those who are proactively looking. And often that second category is given greater prestige within police departments. In fact, People who just sit and wait for the calls are sometimes called sort of lazy, like not really doing the real police work. And I would suspect David would be highly suspicious of the category number two officer who, who goes out looking for trouble. It'd be interesting to know how that plays out in Northampton. Like who, how does that work? How do, yeah, how does people, do people end up out Nam on the street? Namdi, give me, uh, summarize that as an agenda item. Sure, sure. I would say that in addition, uh, it, to me, I, I hear it is along with the list of the property checks and all, it, it's, it's, um, See, I would say proactive versus uh, versus passive policing. Let's let's call it that. Let's call it that because I think that that's, yeah. Uh, and and then, but I think it fits in. David, if I'm correct what you're saying. You're describing the problems of the officer who's out there looking at people's homes and uh, like just in in a situation where they don't need to be, and that's when certain trouble might emerge. Is that David? Am I correct in your concern about some of that with the with the property checks? Um, like what what's the suspicious person? Who's suspicious and who should I be stopping? Yeah, I, I mean it's it's all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, you know, to me, that's different than somebody saying, "Help! I'm being attacked. I need the police." That's different than somebody, a police, driving around saying, "Hey, you look suspicious. What are you doing here?" I mean, the, the, you know, it's a different. You know, it's interesting. You know, I just began scratching the surface of looking at these how the man hours broke down, and when you look at traffic stops. The number from daytime to afternoon shift to evening shift goes up and up and up. And there's no doubt in my mind the reason for that. Uh, I mean, they're, they're not really traffic stops. They're looking for evidence. Uh, they're looking for crime. All right. I will put this on the agenda. It's, um, I think we have to figure out how to articulate it a little bit more clearly, but the two things are related. Yeah. Uh, proactive versus passive policing and what, what, what's happening with the other. I want to bring us to a close. I really want to appreciate the attendance uh, to the meeting by other commission members, Lois and Dan, and also uh, by people uh, from the public, several of you who have attended uh, several of our meetings and, uh, and have made major contributions and very respectful contributions. And I, I just, I appreciate your attendance and I, I wanna just point that out. Um, Next uh, meeting date. Oh yeah. It should be in two, two weeks. Tuesday. January 12th. January 12th. Is what I have, I just wanna confirm. Let me just look at my calendar. 
um, 9, 10, 11, January 12th at 7 o'clock. So the yep. reports to NAMD is uh, NAMD um, uh, yep. because the preliminary is due the 7th. Yep, so, I, so we should probably make a date. I mean, I, I will do my little summary. I, I, was, I was planning to send it to Noah. Nick, can you do this kind of weaving it all together if you get the pieces? Sure. Okay, so, um, so and should we submit the pieces to Noah? Is that, is that the right thing to do? Is that, that's what we've been doing, right? Yes. And what, right. Day, what, do we, what date do we have to get that to Noah by? So I think Cynthia just said January 7th is when everything has to be done by. So does that mean that we kind of need to do this like by early next week by like, I think we should try, it, ideally we should do it before the next full commission meeting. So, so it, by, the, by the weekend, like by the second or third? Yeah, so it's available uh, if anybody in the full commission wants to comment on it. Yeah, so at the end of the week. Um, so I, I, I'll try to get this to, you know, before before Friday to, to my part by to Noah, and then Noah can distribute it to anybody. So if anyone has a concern, you can let me or Noah know and correct it. Does that make sense? Yeah, so wait, what, what, wait, it's really crazy. Thursday and Friday, uh, nothing if, if nothing will go out till Monday morning. Okay. Uh, so, we can wait till, so like, what are we saying, Wednesday? Well, and uh, I, 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 that's tomorrow. Um, Monday, get it, I'll put it together and get it to Noah by Monday. Monday, and Noah, can you put it out on Monday morning? Yeah, right. so. So that's that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll so Monday the fourth is the deadline. Yeah. Okay. And we have to get uh, Elizabeth in the loop with her. Oh um, uh, yeah. Her sections. I didn't get the email. I checked my email, so I I don't know if it went to just some of us or from Elizabeth. Um. If you send me a summary of what she should be working on, I can send that to her. Okay. I, directions or to catch her up. Okay. I um, I'll do that. I'll do that. I've, um, I'm going to bring this unless there's uh, any new business. Let me open it up. Any any other items we missed? Any new business before we bring the meeting to a close? Not that I can think of. Okay. Uh, I, we don't need to take roll call. I um, want to just say we're uh, um, it's an interesting discussion. We tried to fit a lot in, as we always do, in uh, uh, a limited amount of time. So uh, thank you, everybody. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Happy 2021, the next time, it'll all be much better.